is, uh, is a technique that comes from my teacher, Shri Harish Johari. And uh, it's uh, on silk, in this case, with water paint. And uh, the Indians discovered something with watercolor, that if you put it in water and you take it out and you let it dry, it's fixed. That means they found a way to continue working on it for a long time. And uh, what I learned from my teacher is that he found it very important that if you do something with yoga, you have to do something with art. And there are many reasons for that. One of the reasons is you sit longer than you were planning. And you forget time. And another thing is that uh, while painting there is no ego. And the moment you stop painting, ego comes back and puts signature. So that is a little bit why for him it was important to do uh, art. So any form of art has this. It's very easy to approach. It doesn't demand anything. Anything you do is good. It's the only God that allows any image you want to make of him. He doesn't mind anything. So it's a very nice entrance into the spiritual world. And my teacher wrote in his book, if you see in this God, you see God everywhere. Here he is dancing in the cosmos. Actually, all the arts come from here. Second chakra. Painting, sculpting, but also the computer games, video games. All the entertainment comes from here. And you can bring it to higher levels. You can bring it to higher levels. This area is ruled by Vishnu. The animal is a crocodile. He's always on the hunt. Oh, also when he looks sleeping, he likes sunbathing. <laughs> this is third chakra, where we go to ego, an organization. The society cannot run without this organization. We need the organization, that the traffic lights work as they should work, and that we tax offices to collect tax to pay all kinds of other things, it's all needed. Organization is needed to be as we are. This is the area of the king. We're all kings. Ruled by this old Shiva. This is the area where you get more knowledge about all the possibilities and uh, restrictions in each chakra and each element. That you cannot do everything. That there are rules. But also that everything is one. To surrender. Behind every time I use the pattern, which is called Vedic Square. It's an old formula from India also. And my teacher actually found it back with the Arabs. They used it to design their carpets. And they called it Vedic Square and they said it comes from India. And it's a formula I use now for 30 years and I make every time new mandalas. And it is connected with numbers and it is connected that way with planets. So I can give it some spiritual, uh, how do you say that, background, content. And here a pattern is used that belongs to number uh, three, because Jupiter is ruling this chakra. But here it is also going more closely to the union. This is actually Kameshwara chakra, which I put on top of it. This is where it is all about, the union of male and female, or you could say the balance between right and left brain. This is also a very important image belonging to my teacher, Swar Yoga. You get, con get control on knowing which brain is working by watching what nostril is open. He is actually the Lord of Yoga. He is a yogi.
all the yogic science is coming from him, as far as I know. Swara Yoga comes from him. He is the one that is after a total detachment. He has no dress, he's a tiger skin, snakes, that is decoration. Totally surrendering to nature. And in that he is a destroyer, because society does not like that. Everybody start doing that. No more organization. He's the preserver. Like uh, householders are more interested in preserving, because they have children. And sometimes they get grandchildren. So they're interested in the future, that they also keep on going. And he's the master of the game. I told, told you about the Leela game. He is the one that tricks us all the time. When we think we mastered the game, he shows you something new, and oh my God, you lost again. This is Ganga, Ganga Puri. This is uh, called the Granti. I made three, I have only one with me. This is the Granti in the third chakra, it has to do with the first three chakras, and is connected with the physical world that we get lost in the physical world. And the way to stay alive in that physical world is by discipline. This is one for old people. Don't give up. <laughs> Keep on trying. <laughs> there was also one in Berlin. He was 103, Yogananda. And uh, he was doing his exercises, and then he went on the table. So everybody was applauding. You know, wow, 103, climbing on the table, standing on the table, doing exercises on the table. And then he said, now I do something that you cannot do. And he put his two legs behind his head. more, uh, how do you say that, centering, studying of energies, patterns, uh, using again this Vedic square and studying and trying to find symbols with it. And again I start with Ganesha. This is Ganesha Yantra. I give classes in that, how to make Yantras. And I ask everybody to start with this one. Because he takes away obstacles, he restores balance, and with a little luck also some knowledge how to keep balance. The female energy. This one is called Sinamasta. That's the one that cuts off her head, herself actually telling to stay in the head. Like the yogi is recycling his fluid. Yeah, but that is very difficult to all the time stay. Uh, Krishna is saying keep the attention on the point of your nose. Which we don't like here, because your eyes might stay like that. But also to keep your attention here. And some are able to keep it here, but that's more difficult. It's not so easy to hear if you your eyes cannot go higher, so it's easy to fix on that and to stay there. But we have to come down, we have to eat. Yantra is uh, this symbol, very simple and very strong to work on, to work with. The colors are very important. Making it, and it makes you also look at the color for a long time. And colors are like food. <coughs> they come to our eyes. Uh, the, the, the science behind color is this is all except blue. 
All colors are absorbed in here except blue. Blue is reflected back. So that's what you see. That is the science. That is not Indian stuff. This is Western science stuff. This is how we are tricked by our sense organs. There is no taste in the products. Taste is in the tongue. There are no images. The eyes make images. The eyes receive frequencies. So also painting. Something strange. But okay, it gives nice colors. And another Krishna. But this time dancing with the gopis. Been in Brindaban. Krishna is more than the Hare Krishna movement. In India there is a lot of Krishna. Everybody is involved in Krishna one way or the other. Shiva Baba, it doesn't matter. Krishna actually means infinite consciousness. That is his uh, definition. That means it stands above everything. But others call it Shiv. There are, there's no one name. There's actually no name. But we need some name. That is actually an uh, old religion. Also Romans, Greek. They use the planets, worship the planets. And India is very much around the planets. My teacher said, you cannot escape the planets. And I tried. This one is called Ram. He is a great hero in India. Actually the role model. People say all the time, Ram Ram. Sita Ram, to remember that Ram lived in simple life in jungle, in exile, and the opponent was living in Lanka, and that was like America, like the Bahamas, like Belgium, like Holland. Best rock bands, best TV productions. And Ram had this as army animals, bears, monkeys, and the other one had rockets and everything. So he shows the power of simple life. And his main thing is do your duty. Just do your duty. If we all would do our duty, it would be all perfect. Last incarnation, Buddha. He calls it all emptiness, which is in a way true. But it's a living emptiness. Not a form of Shiv. Panchvaktra, Shiv, Shiva with the five heads, the one from the fifth chakra, the Guru. Every head represents one element or one chakra of the five first five chakras, the five elements. He's teaching you again what I said, the possibilities and the restrictions of each chakra. Dada is the devotee. It shows how powerful the devotee can be. More powerful than even Krishna, than God. Some strange thing in the Indian philosophy, too. It's in a way ego, Radha. But then the devotional side of it. India and India also gives art a very important place by creating this Saraswati. And you see Saraswati everywhere in India. 
art and the crafts, that was the old system we had before the industrial time. We did not have psychologists, no therapists. Again, the importance of art. My teacher loved to make Saraswati's. Every writing thing that he started, he would always start with the Saraswati. Every time different. And it just happens. That is also something in this painting style. I told you there is no ego. So who's painting? And according to my teacher, the gods are painting themselves. So that is some kind of surrender. I only have to do my duty. Artists also have to live on the women. Women are biggest supporters of art, no doubt. And then they give money. Lakshmi. I studied economy only one year. I had enough of it. And then many years later my teacher said, now I'll teach you different economy. Lakshmi. You get what you deserve. So don't worry. It's all in your horoscope. On the cell phone. Fantastic to have him on the cell phone. <laughs> Her name is Honey. And she's good in art. She does hand decorations and then she signs Honey. She becomes an artist. women in procession, during a procession. Me trying to paint all these saris and clothes and different faces. This is in a way study for me. Study colors. Can I get that color? How do I get that color? And then the technique helps me a lot with giving washes and layers and layers on top of each other. That's something my teacher learned me how to continue. Always when I asked him, and something more? He always had something more. Never stopped. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you can zoom him out or zoom him in one of the two. <laughs> this is Rudy. <laughs> and this is Saraswati. And the background is the shifling mountain called the Shifling. And he is standing in the sixth chakra in the Shifling. Oh, I like that. We don't make mistakes anymore. There's no more game. No more fun. This is another Gayatri. The five heads are the five elements. And she's having the attributes of the three gods. These are the three gunas, three ways in which energy can present itself, like uh, water is fluid, steam and ice are three ways in which water can show itself. Kali, Mother Nature, see? You follow the laws of Mother Nature, she is a loving mother. 
she is a loving mother. She's a mother. She loves mm. her children. Well, Parvati was meditating to uh, attract the attention of Shiva. So she meditated very long. She meditated very long, very long. So much that even the gods got desperate and begged Shiva to do something. Come on, man, are you blind? But nevertheless, oh, everything around her came to peace. Everything was in peace. That is something that also happens with us. If we do meditation around us, peace comes. Gayatri is a powerful mantra. The other one is the Mahamrachunjaya. This is the Mahamrachunjaya Shiva. If astrologers don't know what to do anymore, they tell you to do Gayatri or Mahamrachunjaya. And this uh, mantra of Shiva conquers death and disease. And he's putting water on top of him. That is a continuous rotting process. He has scorpions in his ears, snakes around him. <coughs> Nothing can kill him. He's never born, he can never die. That's deep inside us too. This is uh, Lakshmi, but actually Kamala. When she's white, she's Kamala, one of the Mahavijas. Durga again, the invincible, but very shanti. But she can be up in a second. This one is also called Durga where she is seen as the one that is everything. She is all the three goddesses, all the goddesses, and even there are visions in India that see all the gods come from her. And actually my teacher also said so. We have Shiv, the one that is also always meditating, and everything that is in movement is Shakti. So even we males are Shakti, because we move. And even Shiv in the stories is Shakti. Because he moves. Vishnu is Shakti. Everything that moves is Shakti. Only the one that is not moving and always in meditation is called Shiv. And this is another painting of the crowd and my last one. Okay, finished. I have nothing to say anymore. Thank you. Oh, it's great to do. Great therapy. This bhajan, and the same, this is also bhajan. It actually can keep me, it keeps me busy for 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Peacefully. Hmm? Oh, every day. Nowadays I can afford myself a little bit more and I visit my friend sometimes. He has to beer me that. <laughs> but uh, when I was younger I used to do it every day. Well, in a way, uh, my teacher used a style that is based on the old uh, temples like uh, Kajarao, Elefanta, uh, Elora, and Ajanta. That is a style that was there 2,000 years ago. And that was something new he did by painting them. It was not done in India before that uh, these images were sketched. They were always sketched. He was a sculpturist. So that's why he made these sketches. And then his painting teacher said, I want to paint them. And then he said, no, I want to paint them. So that's how we learned the technique. But it is actually out of nothing, it comes. So I start always with a naked body. I'm the only one who see them naked, my teacher said. <laughs> 
and then I start polishing. Everybody will have his own style, but my style is of uh, polishing long, long time. Perfection is not possible. It is something you have to accept. So I call this uh, the illusion of perfection. Where is the switch to put it off? <laughs> <laughs> Do something. 